Imagine if the head of Coca-Cola announced he'd rather drink Pepsi, or if Steve Waugh turned up playing for the Poms. Well, in the sport of Australian motor racing, that's exactly the shockwave that greeted Ford's announcement that they'd poached champion driver Craig Lowndes from arch-rivals Holden. Just 26 years old, Lowndes now faces the race of his life, one that will be fought just as hard off the track as it will be on. At stake is millions of dollars as two traditional enemies, Ford and Holden, slug it out for corporate supremacy. It's a sight Australian motor racing fans never thought they'd see. Craig Lowndes, full tilt in a Ford, not a Holden. It's not lazy anywhere, it's very sharp. At the end of the sweeper though, it's loose, it's lateral grip. We've got a challenge in front of us. Uh, you know, the cars may not be the best car out there. And, uh, you know, the challenge for me is, is to just wring its neck and get the best out of it. And, uh, you know, that's what we'll be doing. It has a little bit of front push. We're the underdogs. Uh, we will be more competitive. And he'll be right up the front. I look at motor racing as sort of like gladiators or heavyweight boxing. You know, you actually need two strong competitors slugging it out uh, to make it exciting. And that's what it's going to be. Who's going to win? We are. <laughs> But in December, it was Ford who was smiling. Look who got a new car for Christmas, crowed the full-page ads. Rubbing salt into the wounds of Holden fans. Fans so dedicated, they even have their Holden allegiance tattooed on their backs. What do you think when Craig made the switch from Holden to Ford? Shocking. Terrible. Real traitor. Oh, I was upset. Um, shocked. And really disappointed. Very disappointed. Holden set him up. He should have stuck with Holden. You feel like a traitor? It was a decision that, that took a long time. It did. It, it was something that uh, probably for myself, uh, the worst thing for me was obviously the public's reaction. Those guys that were putting the Holden, Holden posters up there or tattoos on their back uh, will, will hopefully soon uh, you know, replace them with Ford ones. The reason why Ford was so keen to get Craig is simple. Ford needs to sell more cars. Last year, the Holden Commodore outsold the Ford Falcon by 20,000. So Ford is gambling on Craig becoming its number one salesman. Not that he'll be putting on a suit and tie, he'll do his business on the track. And as the industry saying goes, win on Sunday, sell on Monday. There are loyal Holden buyers and there are loyal Ford buyers. The, the loyalties are worn with passion at the racetrack and off the racetrack. So, um, if you want to be relevant to those people, you've got to give them something to which they can aspire. We weren't doing that, and uh, we're about to do that now. We found that now, it's all gone. Ford boss Jeff Polite says he's tired of coming second, both on the track and on the showroom floor. It's why he shifted Ford's sponsorship millions away from the Australian Open tennis and into motorsport via Craig Lowndes. He will generate a second generation of Ford fans. It's not only about the fans that are here today, it's about next year's fans and the ones after who come into this sport who will grow up being Ford and Craig Lowndes fans. And that's why it's so important to have him as a long-term investment. The, the rear seems to let go on the second stage. I don't know whether it's actually coming back or whether it sort of falls. He's everything you want your brand to be uh, and he can drive. Three starts, three wins, the kid is the champ. Craig Lowndes... At the Holden Racing Team, Craig Lowndes had spectacular success. He thoroughly deserves it. And one spectacular crash. But that aside, they were a great combination. Craig gave Holden victories, and they gave him enormous backup, including three cars and 13 engines. With his new team, it's a different story. Just one car and one engine. Like it's actually just a little bit too stiff. Um, I've been buggerising around with a brake by, so I'm probably... In the You've always been part of a winning team. Why go to a brand that always seems to run second? We'll be hopefully part of something that Ford now will... Uh, uh, we'll now get back up on top. We will be hopefully brand leaders in, in the near future. And, uh, you know, I want to carry number one on the car again. That's no question. I think every driver in the category does. It wasn't all about winning or making money or doing any of that. It was just about being fulfilled in our life. And, uh, you know, we can do that now. You take her out now. 
Come on, you. You may notice Craig uses the word we a lot. He's referring to his wife, Natalie. They share their Queensland home with their horses, literally. No, no. And they share everything with each other. We are soulmates. Uh, everything I feel, Nat, Nat feels, and uh, vice versa. So really, you know, we, we do travel uh, very closely, and uh, you know, we, we bounce off each other in respect of information and uh, feelings. And uh, you know, when I'm happy, uh, I want Nat to be there. If Nat's happy, I want to be there. So together, they plan Craig's career, and together, they answer questions from fans furious at what they see as his betrayal. We've got one bad one here, which says Holden's rule the road. Drive on Holden, over, over Ford rust buckets, hee hee. So it's a bit of a joke, but it gives us something, I suppose, in the end to reply back to them and give them a little bit of insight why we changed and how happy we really are with the change. And we go from there and usually they write back and they're really good. The in fans the are angry, but also confused. It seems such a perfect fit, Holden and Lowndes. But while there were smiles on the winner's podium, behind the scenes there was a bitter and personal feud brewing. We had some uh, uh, things that went on in 2000 that, that really uh, probably made me feel a little bit left out. What things made you feel left out? Uh, I guess there was things, uh, there was a situation I can remember uh, where the team went testing and uh, you know we were left out and that, that sort of things that went on that probably uh, didn't give me encouragement, at, put it that way. But we're talking about the superstar V8 driver in Australia being left out in testing? <laughs> Well, it was, I guess, again, it was something that uh, um, it went on and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll live and learn and uh, make sure it doesn't happen again. A confidential settlement between Craig Lowndes and the Holden Racing Team means Craig can't comment in detail about the split, especially the personalities involved. But that hasn't stopped others having their say, particularly about the role of HRT boss John Crennan. We look forward to fulfilling all of our sponsor goals and building their brand. Creno is known far and wide for being the hardest, toughest sort of operator who will basically do anything to see that things go his way. Yeah, the SS also has stiffer springs and shocks. Peter Brock if has been Holden's number one son on and off for more than 30 years. He suspects John Crennan's tough negotiating style alienated Lowndes. It's a style Brock has experienced firsthand. One day I was negotiating for a contract there and I said, John, this is what I need. I, I really need this. I've just got these, that's my, my bills I've got to pay. And John actually said to me, well, Peter, basically, you know, you're nothing but a has-been. You're yesterday's hero. And uh, sorry, but that's it. I thanked him for his candor. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate knowing exactly where you're coming from. Is he a bloke you'd ask up here for a barbie? Up here for a barbie? Uh, probably not. Holden refused to let John Crennan speak to 60 Minutes, but he did send this letter claiming credit for much of Lowndes' success. It got very personal, but John at the other end of the scale would be saying, yes, but that's, that's, only, that's only the way I conduct my business. Is it a good way to conduct business? Well, it's, look, at the end of the day, you do end up having some um, heartache. You do end up uh, having some situations such as they're finding right now where you lose a Craig Lowndes. Uh, but the last time I drove it was going well. Now, there's a story why this hasn't been going for six years. Tell me. <laughs> I guess it was just carrying the wrong label on the, on the front of the car. Perhaps it's coincidence. Perhaps it's a sign. But Lowndes' first car was a Ford, yeah. a 1965 yeah. Ford Cortina. Yeah, I've, I've had this since I was uh, 17. How did you feel when Holden said, leave it in the garage, don't go down to get the bread? <laughs> During his time with Holden, it remained know, hidden exactly away good. in Craig's I'm Queensland garage. Assist. Well, you have guaranteed me it'll start because... Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, you've got a history as a motor mechanic. <laughs> Let's listen. <laughs> well, crank over now. I get ignition. Oh, want, needs a little bit more than what it's got. You want to call road service? I do now. <laughs> the dyed in the wall fan who's Holden through and through is going to sit back and they're going to go, Craig Lowndes, traitor. Now, all you can do with Craig, for Craig is say, Craig, look, just that's life. That's just the way it is. It's like changing footy clubs. And they'll give him a spray when they, they say They may well give him a spray. But I don't think it'll worry Craig too much. He'll sit back and go, look, fine. I understand how you feel, but uh, you don't understand the full story. What can you do in life now that you're associated with Ford that HRT wouldn't let you do? Uh, be closer to the brand. 
I think there's things there that, uh, you know, I, I really want to be a big part of this. I've got a five-year agreement with Ford and uh, I want to grow with them. Oh, no. This car it should come as no surprise that Craig thrashed me at PlayStation. I'm living the dream of a million motor racing fans taking on Craig Lowndes. OK. Are we going? Yeah. It should also come as no surprise that his youthful enthusiasm is a large reason why Ford so desperately wanted him. Well, you're in front of me at the moment. <laughs> Something like 80% of young kids, when they are asked what they would prefer their first car to be, say a Commodore. Now, Ford, no, that's going to take a lot of counteracting. It's going to take a long time. It's going to take a lot of investment to get that to turn around. Now, with Craig, they've got a pretty potent weapon, but it's up to them what they do about it. And uh, all I can say is that um, Craig is now in the box seat. But even the best can occasionally come off second best. Craig, what happened? Oh, just testing. Made, made a mistake. And you can be assured that every mistake, every mishap, is being watched with keen interest at Holden. I think it's going to be tough for him. And there's going to be a lot of pressure on him, you know? Everybody's going to be out there putting heaps of pressure on him. And don't think those guys don't go out there and go bang, bang, touch, touch, push, push, because there's plenty of that goes on. It's not all clean. <laughs> Holden Sales and Marketing Director, Ross McKenzie. If you were wearing a Ford hat, would you have done exactly what Ford's done to try and get Craig? Absolutely. And I think to some degree I've been worried that it's been sort of a one-horse race for a fair while. I mean, we won 19 races last year to three, I think, and it's, it becomes a, bit, a little bit monotonous, OK? So I'm quite happy if... They're more competitive, not too competitive. If we're uncompetitive, what is it? It's, it's a Holden procession. If they're uncompetitive, it's a Ford procession. That's no good for anybody. This category needs rivalry. This category excites people's passion. And you can't get passionate if it's a cakewalk. For all the talk off the track, it's on the bitumen that Lowndes ultimately has to deliver. Craig Lowndes, the fastest lap of the race so far. At round one of this year's championship at Phillip Island, he got his first opportunity to prove to himself and his fans that he made the right decision. Lowndes and Ambrose, here they come. In the first race of the day, he comes in third, which is reason to celebrate. <laughs> A few hours later, and he goes one better. Second behind former teammate and now Holden rival, Mark Scaife. Hey, Bobby. Good news for Ford, but Holden, publicly at least, remains unconcerned. The Holden fans, I have to say, the Holden fans are not loyal to Craig. They're loyal to Holden, OK? They're going to stay, no question. Nonetheless, Craig's initial success sets the scene for a tough, intriguing season between the young gun and his old team. He has been the champion. It's just a matter of staying on that, that borderline, that knife edge, and, and just, just really lap after lap after lap, just giving very consistent lap times. And again, that's what the championship's all about. Well, if the championship's there to be grabbed, I'll be up there with two hands trying to grab it. The fact is Craig has kind of bet all his chips on one move. Um, it's one thing to be the best race car driver on t sitting on top of a great piece of machinery. But he's now in a piece of machinery that's not quite as proven. If it's technically inferior, I don't care how good he is, he won't win. If he wins, he'll be a hero. If he doesn't, I think people are going to look at him and say, you're a dill. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.